Gentlemen, let's launch this rocket. Good luck, Friendship 7. Godspeed, Langley. Hey guys, my name's Doc Jade, and welcome to episode 2 of K2SE. Today we're going to set up blue and yellow tech cards. We're already working on red circuits for blue cards, so that's not too far away. But yellow science has quite a few prerequisites, so there's a lot to do. We should research productivity modules for the labs at some point, but we'll need those red circuits first, so let's get started on those. Red circuits require electronic components, which take plastic, glass, and silicon. We've got petroleum set up, but we never actually made anything with it. As usual, plastic is just coal and some petroleum, and we make it in chemical plants. Luckily, we already have coal nearby, so it's pretty much just plug and play. And right on cue, that's red circuits. Let's make those components. After putting the plastic on the bus, and remembering I already have glass, we just need to make the silicon, which is made from smelting quartz. We can make quartz from sand and water using a filtration plant. I'll grab the stuff to make one. Our pulverizer is making a lot of rare metals, and there isn't really anything we can do with them at the moment, so hopefully we don't run out of storage space. More bus expansion later. We can use the water from the refineries to make quartz, so we'll need to bring the sand from the crusher all the way over here. But it's not too far. And now we have quartz. I'll put it on the other side of the plastic belt. Then we can smelt some of it into silicon. A quick smelting array later, my small power poles can't reach the long inserters. So time to research medium power poles. While I waited on that, I threw the output of the smelter next to steel plates. And split off all of the ingredients we'll need for the components. Once medium power poles finished, I placed them, and then realized I built the smelting array perfectly incorrectly. But after fixing perfection, that's silicon. Now for the components, which I forgot the glass for. But after a quick belt swap, there it is. I'm not sure if I'll need these on the bus, so I'll make a U-turn and set up red circuits right next to it, which needs copper wire and green circuits. Easy peasy. Time to cue the blue tech card, which will need red circuits, glass, blank cards, and sulfuric acid. I'll put sulfur right next to the refineries, then I realized our bus is going to crash right into these cliffs. So we're gonna need cliff explosives pretty soon. But first, blue cards. Let's remove the labs and pull the tech cards forwards. Then I'll set up the assemblers for blue cards. But when I want to get the ingredients, it looks like we're gonna have to make cliff explosives first. So, military two, explosives, cliff explosives. Once explosives finished, I put them alongside sulfur. Now I have to fit barrels and grenades in here too. The ingredients for grenades are close by, cliff explosives, and barrels just need steel plates. So they're as easy as pi times r squared times height. And that's cliff explosives. A quick chuck later, we're unstuck. Using some slightly unconventional belt maneuvering, let's hook those ingredients up to the tech cards. Now we just need the acid, which fits in nicely right here. After placing a peck of pickling piping, that's the cards. A relocation of the labs later, we can start researching again. We should defend ourselves from meteors at some point, but our base isn't too big, so I don't think it'll be an issue. Let's do radars instead, especially since we're starting to get attacked by a few biters now. I wasn't quite sure where they were coming from, but then this pollution flickered and I immediately knew. After a battle shorter than the Anglo-Zanzibar War, that's radars. If you look at the minimap, you can see the coverage of the radar, the size of which cannot be described with words. But if I were to try, I'd say... Mondo. It also scans sectors very quickly. Looks like the rocket is a prerequisite for yellow science. Interesting. Well, next up is flammables, which finishes very quickly. Almost as quickly as a staring contest between two blind people. Now for batteries. I noticed copper was a bit low, so I checked in on the pulverizer, which has now completely backed up on rare metals. Time for a second chest. After reenacting the events of November 9th, 1989, and holding some spicy rocks, that's batteries. I'll set them up next to red circuits because I get to choose. Wait, what's that? 
Pyroflux dousing. We can make steam with just liquids? Cool, but I'm not sure when I'd need to do that. I plugged in water instead of sulfuric acid, and nothing happened. After switching it and hooking up the plates, that's batteries. Next to red circuits it goes. Two meteors hit the planet, but I only see one. Did it take a rain check? Or perhaps a shower check? The meteors reminded me of the Manus ejections, but luckily we still have another 40 hours to prepare. Next up on the tech tree is fuel refining, which is apparently not at all related to fuel processors. Looks like it can make a different kind of fuel, and solid fuel. While we wait on that, kill. After licking the floor clean, that's fuel refining. Steel furnaces are next. Then big power poles. Now that we have fuel and processed fuel, I wonder if we can process fuel into processed fuel for more fuel per fuel in our fuels. I went to set up advanced oil processing, but we haven't unlocked it yet. So we'll do that next right after big power poles. We only have five refineries, so I don't think we'll need that many chemical plants for cracking. There's advanced oil. But when I went to set the recipe, there's two of them now. Crude oil processing is faster, but makes more heavy oil, and the standard processing makes more light oil. Weird. I guess I'll go with the crude one. Just for now, I'll use two chemical plants, since I have no idea what the ratios are. We should also make lube, so I'll research that next. Now for modules. I was wondering if rocket fuel was separate from fuel and processed fuel, and yes it is. But you can also make liquid rocket fuel now. Interesting. Modules. Now, which module should I research first? How about accumulators? Checking in on our pollution output, most of it is coming from our mining drills, followed closely by boilers. I can't improve the boilers, so we'll have to put efficiency modules in the miners. Which should also improve our power satisfaction, which is currently all over the place. Accumulators, now for efficiency modules. Might as well make a few accumulators to help even out the power dips. There's the modules. I'll place the accumulators, then research solar, although we won't build any. Then I can throw efficiency module production right next to red circuits, since all the ingredients are already over here. The core miner, which causes most of our power issues, doesn't accept modules. Very annoying. Just the miners it is then. I'll also quadruple production. Solar! Now for rocket control units. Wait, they take batteries now? Weird. Well, let's set them up. Batteries, red circuits, glass, and iron plates. We'll switch it on once the research finishes. Let's throw those efficiency modules into the miners, which helps quite a bit, but now our leader in consumption is labs. So we'll put them in those too. Glass output was getting a bit weak, so I upgraded to steel furnaces. But it looks like it's actually a stone supply issue, we'll fix it in just a second. Power production is now keeping up nicely. But our lack of smelting speed is starting to show. We need more iron and copper, and glass is still struggling. Luckily, there's a stone patch on our 9 I'll bring it over. Rocket control units. Finally. I'll set the recipe, then we can get started on... Let's put off atmospheric condensers a bit longer. They're a pain. Low density structure. Our glass production is clearly not keeping up, which is due to a lack of sand. Surprisingly, the crusher isn't making it fast enough. So let's detour to speed modules, because I don't want to fit another crusher over there. I replaced efficiency module production with the speed modules, but apparently they need solid fuel. Why do they need solid fuel? I'll make some by hand, throw them in the crusher, and give it a loader. This should hopefully fix the pain in our glass. Might as well speed up the pulverizer as well. Now that glass has caught up with demand, that's low density structure. Now for heat shielding. Actually, before that, let's get some lab speed. Green circuits are falling behind now, so I'll upgrade the assemblers to level 2. Lab research is done, back to heat shielding. 
Continuing to chase production issues, our copper supply can no longer keep up, but some fast inserters should help. There's the shielding. Now for big electric motors. Heat shielding takes sulfur, stone tablets, and steel plates. What a weird recipe. After big electric motors finished, I started setting up low density structure. Might as well start stockpiling all of the rocket ingredients. Well, no more avoiding it. Time for atmospheric condensation, which lets us pull gases and water straight out of the air. Plastic ain't looking too hot. Looks like our refineries are completely backed up on heavy oil. One chemical plant is definitely not enough. Also, the pulverizer stopped. Again. We need even more storage. Research. So I'll put the shelter here for just a tad more. But it's already half full, so I'll add some more steel chests. Back on task, let's fix the cracking setup. I'll switch to a tileable setup. A water shortage? Oh, I just need to increase the limit on the water pump. Next up on the tree, rocket fuel. Petroleum production is still struggling, so I'll add yet another chemical plant. Rocket fuel. Now for the silo. Yet another chemical plant later. Still not enough. Whatever, let's set up rocket fuel. There's three recipes for rocket fuel. I'll go with the first one since we don't have to make any ammonia or hydrogen chloride for it. But it does require oxygen, so we'll need an atmospheric condenser. This is not an atmospheric condenser. This is a fuel refinery. This one too. I'll grab the iron plates off the bus. And now all we need is the oxygen. This is an atmospheric condenser. These suckers take a ton of power and they don't accept efficiency modules either. That's rocket fuel. But oxygen is a bit slow, so I'll add a second condenser. Maybe even a third. There's the rocket silo. Three condensers seems fast enough. Let's get started on the rocket. Looks like we've unlocked the satellite as well. Let's build a rocket to put it in. The silo takes big electric motors, which I completely forgot to automate. But before we get started on that, our copper issues still haven't subsided, so I added two more furnaces. But now we can't fit enough ore onto the belt. Red belts would fix it, but we don't have them yet. We'll deal with it later. I never automated heat shielding either, so let's do that first. I already have stone bricks on the bus, so stone tablets are easy, and steel is right here. But sulfur is all the way over by the refineries... well, not really. We're barely making any. Once again, we're backed up on heavy oil another chemical plant, and some speed modules. Then I'll put sulfur on the bus next to basic tech cards. Now we can make the shielding. Two assemblers should be enough for now. Time for those big electric motors, which after pulling lube down are super easy. I'll chest them for now. I started pulling all of the rocket ingredients over to where I want to put the silo. But yet again, the pulverizer has stopped. Oh, this time it's just mineral water. I'll add a second tank. With all of the ingredients brought over, I'll gather the materials for a silo, make it, and place it. But before we start making a rocket, we should definitely put some productivity modules in here. And instead of copper wire or solid fuel, it needs glass. I'll make four of them, and throw them in. After the rocket silo, the only prerequisite for yellow science left is electric furnaces, which needs steel furnaces and heat shielding. With all four modules, let's plug in the silo. Well, that builds. Time to make a satellite. The ingredients aren't too weird, so I can just run around and grab them. A bit later, there's the rocket. Let's launch that sucker. I'd like to take a moment to thank my supporters on Kofi. Their contributions allow me to eat nothing but nails. Just kidding. Now that we've launched a satellite, we get access to the satellite uplink. And the satellite also found a weapons cache, which has some requester chests in it. Nice. I'll switch into uplink mode, where we can basically take the camera anywhere we want, including areas we haven't explored yet. Cool. In the silo, we got some satellite telemetry, which is one of the ingredients for yellow tech cards. Let's go get that weapons cache, which besides being full of creep and a little weird, 
Oh. It has this massive requester warehouse. And three slightly smaller requester strong boxes. And to top it all off, we also got a railgun and some railgun ammo. Let's take it for a spin. Okay. It can one-shot nests and pierces through enemies. Back to science, yellow tech cards are still waiting on electric furnaces, and our steel furnaces are still waiting on copper. I'll queue logistics too. While we wait on those, we can use the uplink to reveal biters just off the map. Then I'll take them out. This railgun is extremely powerful. Once I got bored of that, electric furnaces. Electric furnaces are usually pretty simple, but since every tier of furnace requires the previous tier of furnace, we have to automate all the way up from stone furnaces, which is slightly annoying since we don't have plain stone on the bus. Time for another absurdly long belt. Speaking of belts, logistics too. Now for yellow tech cards, and I'll start setting up the furnaces. You might wonder why I call the tech cards by their color and not their names. There's a simple explanation. I keep forgetting their names. After hooking up shielding and red circuits, that's electric furnaces. Since yellow tech cards require satellite telemetry, we'll need to automate the satellite as well. Here I research filter inserters for no discernible reason. I want to directly insert the satellites, so I'll put the assembler right next to the rocket. Luckily, most of the ingredients are already nearby, but we'll need to automate solar panels, accumulators, and radars as well. I don't want to mass produce those, so I'll directly insert them as well which causes things to get quite messy very quickly. Speaking of mess, I miss batteries. We're in a sulfur shortage because yet again, we need more cracking. I got cracking on that. Then we can finish up accumulators, which I mistakenly tried to make with copper plates. One terrible jump cut later, all that's left is solar panels. I'll nab these silicon and green circuits from red circuit production. And we're done. Fully automatic satellite telemetry. But we haven't finished researching yellow tech cards. I would put some productivity modules in the labs, but we don't have enough power for that. So let's make said power. Well, we finished the cards before the power upgrade, but at least we've got more headroom now. Man, those atmospheric condensers are power hungry. I'll also stockpile some accumulators just in case. Another bus extension later. Let's get started on the cards. But, as I was pulling the ingredients off the bus, two meteors hit the base. Destroying a few things and damaging a lot more. So, I started repairing everything by hand. Okay, this is taking too long. Let's make some construction robots to do it for us. Thankfully, personal roboports aren't too far away. We'll build yellow cards while that research is in the background. We need to make speed modules for the cards, and since we don't have electronic components on the bus, we'll have to pull them up and over. Then I'll place the assemblers, and start bringing in the ingredients. And there's the personal roboport. I'll finish the speed modules. And that's yellow science. Twelve and a half hours. Might as well throw productivity modules over here, too. Then I'll make some armor, a roboport, and a big personal solar panel. Then a couple robots later... We're... well, they're... repairing. Good as renewed. Let's chuck the science into some labs with productivity modules. Well, that's every science but military science for this lab. The next science is quite far down the tree, and has a lot of prerequisites. So we'll have to do that, and maybe defend ourselves from mass ejections next time. I'd like to thank my supporters on Kofi for real this time. I have a feeling that every subsequent episode of K2SC is going to take quite a bit longer than the previous one. So make sure to turn on channel notifications so you don't miss out. And that's all for today. My name's Doc Jade. Bye bye